I could paint the kind of world that I wanted. It was clean, it was sparkling, shiny, beautiful, no pollution, nobody, nobody upset. Everybody was happy in this world. Okay, it's time to talk about another application of the chain rule. And this is really just a whole method of differentiation that the chain rule gives us. So first off, let's just start with an easy example, a motivating question. Can we find the derivative of some function like, let's say, 5y squared? Notice that I'm using the variable y, but we're taking the derivative with respect to x. What's going on here? Well, I'm supposing that y is some function of x that we don't know. We don't have a formula for. So I'll say that y depends on x, but we don't have a formula. OK, the answer is yes, we can. The whole idea, then, is to treat that y as the inside function in the chain rule. So the answer is just to use the chain rule with y as a function of x as the inside function. So here's what I mean. We think about the derivative of 5y squared as coming from the chain rule by taking the derivative of the whole outside function, which is really just this as a function of y. In other words, we just take the derivative as a function of y. What's the derivative of y squared? It's just 2y by the power rule. 5 is a constant out front. And then by the chain rule, we need to multiply by, we could write down f prime of x, but I'm going to instead use Leibniz notation and write dy by dx. So that's really the chain rule, OK? So here, if we're thinking of it as the chain rule, this is the derivative of the outside function. Whereas on the other hand, the dy by dx, that's the derivative of the inside function. Even though we don't know what y is in terms of x, we can still use this idea in a way that will help us. So you might say, oh, well, you took the derivative and now it's just this. How do I know what to do with this? I don't know what dy by dx is. Well, the key is that sometimes you're just given an equation involving y's and x's. It might not even be a function. All right. So check it out. Suppose that we have some equation. And it's going to involve y and x. It might not be an equation just like y equals sine of x or something. It could be an equation that involves y and x in a complicated way. All right, like, say like this. It's just some equation involving y's and x's. It gives some relationship between the variables x and y. And in fact, this equation, notice that I use the word equation because there's an equal sign. It's the assertion that two things are equal. This equation prescribes a relationship between y and x. And what we're going to do is we can take the derivative of everything. We can take the derivative with respect to x. So I'll use the derivative operator, d by dx. We can take that derivative, d by dx, of the entire equation. And then solve for dy dx to 
find the rate of change of y with respect to x, it still gives us that information. So this is called implicit differentiation because y is only implicitly a function of x. It's not implicit, explicitly a function of x. Right? This is called implicit differentiation because y is implicitly a function of x, not explicitly a function of x. It works even though we don't have a formula for y in terms of x. So here's what I mean. Let's take that equation and now let's start taking its derivative. Before we saw that if we take the derivative of 5y squared, then using the chain rule, we can take the derivative of the outside function, which is just the part of the function as a function of y, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, the inside piece as a function of x is just y as a function of x. So we multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, so that's the derivative of the first piece of the equation. Now we're taking the derivative of x cubed with respect to x. That's not so bad. We use the power rule. It's 3x squared. Okay, now we come along minus x times y. We need to take the derivative of that as a function of x. That's going to be the product rule. Okay, I'm going to think of that as minus x times y. Let me write out the steps for you. It'll be the derivative of the first part, minus x, times the second part, y, plus the first part, minus x, times the derivative of the second part, y. And now finally, we get to here, plus 2, we take the derivative of 2, well 2 is constant. Derivative of a constant is 0. So when we take the derivative of this entire equation, we get this entire equation. Alright, let's let the dust settle for a second. 5 times 2 is 10. Here we have a dy by dx. Remember we're going to be solving for that to find the rate of change of y with respect to x in one second. First we need to deal with the derivatives on the right hand side. Let's see the derivative of minus x with respect to x, that's just minus 1. So this piece is just contributing minus 1. So with the y that'll give a minus y. And then what about this? Well we have a minus x and then here we have the derivative of y with respect to x. We don't know what y is as a function of x. It's only implicit. But still, in different notation, right, that's just dy by dx. Whatever it is, it's the derivative of y with respect to x. And that's why we use the dy over dx fraction notation. It really just means the derivative operator applied to y. Symbolic. Great, so now our equation looks like this. Now we solve for dy by dx. Now it's just a matter of algebra. Okay, to do that, I want all my dy by dx's to be on one side of the equation. So I'm going to take this one and move it to the left-hand side. In other words, I'm going to add x times dy over dx to both sides. All right, what do I get then? I'm also going to factor out the dy by dx while I'm at it. We'll have 10y coming from this term. When I move that term over, it becomes a positive x. I'm factoring that out, that dy by dx times x, like so. So that accounts for the two terms involving dy by dx. Now I also have minus y here. I don't have the minus x, right? That came over here. But I have to deal with the 3x squared. I'm going to move that to the right-hand side, like so. Why would I do that? because then I can divide both sides by 10y plus x, and I get an equation for the derivative of y with respect to x. Even though we don't know what y is as a function of x, it's only defined implicitly by using this technique of taking the derivative of the entire equation and then solving for dy by dx, we still get a formula for the derivative, the instantaneous rate of change, that's useful. That's the name of the game. It's enjoying. You really already enjoy what you do in life. If you do, then you'll do a good job. Mm. And I certainly enjoy what I'm doing.
Let's see another example of implicit differentiation in action. We're given an equation. We're not given y as a function of x. We're just given some relationship between the variables x and y. They affect each other. As you change x, you'll change y, because this equation's got to be true. As x changes, the y has to correspondingly change to keep the equation true. And we'll still be able to find the instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x, even though we don't have a formula for y as a function of x. So check it out. What's the idea? The idea is to take the derivative of both sides, specifically the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation, and then solve for dy by dx. Here we go. So we're going to take the derivative of e to the xy on the left-hand side. That's going to take a few steps, so I'm going to write it out carefully. And then on the right-hand side, we'll have the derivative of x to the fourth. That's easy enough. And then we'll have minus the derivative of 2y. OK. First off, the derivative of e to the x times y. We're taking the derivative of something that has an inside part and an outside part. The outside part is the exponential. The inside part is x times y. Since the derivative of e to the anything is just e to the anything, that's the derivative of the outside function. But we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. In this case, that's just the expression xy. Okay, that's the left-hand side. Uh, derivative of x to the fourth, that's just 4x cubed. And now derivative of 2y, careful, it's not 2, right? We're thinking of y as a function of x, or more generally, as something that depends on x according to this prescribed relationship given by the equation. So and this is really, the minus 2 comes out, and this is really dy dx. The derivative of y with respect to x just is that derivative of y with respect to x. That's the thing we're trying to solve for. OK, uh, let's continue. We have e to the xy times, and now, how do we take the derivative of x times y? Well, they're multiplied, so it's got to be the product rule. The derivative of the first function, the derivative of x with respect to x, that's just going to be 1. Let me write that out to show you. So we'll have the derivative of the first function, x, times the second function, y. And now that piece, that's just 1. Derivative of x is x. Uh, continuing on with the product rule, we have the first function times the derivative of the second function. Well, that's dy by dx. Right? Derivative of the first piece times the second, plus the first piece times the derivative of the second. That's the derivative of x times y. Nothing's going to change on the right-hand side of this equation, but we got to keep it around, right? We're working with an equation. We started with an equation. We have to keep having an equation each time. It's kind of a different sort of process. Okay, replacing this by 1 and then multiplying everything out, what do we got? We have e to the xy times y, coming from that times that, we have e to the xy times x times the derivative of y with respect to x. And now I want to solve for dy by dx ultimately. I've just multiplied all this out. So let's also move this piece, minus 2 dy dx, over to the left-hand side. Because I want to solve for dy dx. But I'll keep the 4x cubed on the right-hand side. So I just added 2 dy dx to both sides. I moved the minus 2 dy dx over to the left. We're almost ready to go. We're almost done. I'm going to first of all move this term over to the right-hand side so all that's left are these terms. But then I'm going to factor out the dy by dx since that's what we're trying to solve for. So I have e to the xy times x plus 2 times that common factor dy by dx. On the right hand side I have 4x cubed. What happened to e to the xy times y? Well, I'm moving that over to the right hand side. Because it doesn't have a dy by dx. Right? 
trying to solve for dy by dx. And now we can finally do it. We just need to take the right hand side and divide it by that term in parentheses there, e to the xy times x plus 2. So even though we don't have a formula for y as a function of x, we can still find the instantaneous rate of change. Now, shoot, do you know me? I think everybody needs a friend, so we're going to give him one right here. Some nice bright colors. It's a fantastic day. So here's a nifty trick. We can use implicit differentiation, this method that we've been using, to find the derivative of the natural log function. All right, check it out. How does this work? Let's set y equal to ln of x. That's the natural log function, logarithm with base e. What does a logarithm function mean? Well. The natural log of x, that just means whatever number you have to raise e to to get x. If that number is y, then that means that e to the y is equal to x, right? Another way to say it is that e to the something and natural log of something, they undo each other. They're inverse functions. Okay, let me write that down on the page. This is exactly true because ln and e to the, you know, I'll say like ln of something and e to the something are inverse functions. They undo each other. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation, e to the y is equal to x, and we're going to take the derivative of both sides. Specifically, the derivative with respect to x. So we're going to apply the derivative operator with respect to x to both sides of the equation e to the y equals x. Here we go. And just to show my work, I'm going to show all the steps. On the left, I have the derivative of e to the y. On the right, I have the derivative of x. OK, so those derivatives are equal. OK, next up, how do we find this derivative? Well, it's e to the something, and y depends on x, so it's going to be a chain rule. The exponential function is the outside function. It is its own derivative, like so. But then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is to say the derivative of y with respect to x. On the other hand, here we have the derivative of x with respect to x. That's just 1. OK, finally, when we were doing um, implicit differentiation before, we would be happy to just find dy dx by dividing both sides by e to the y. And it's true, it is equal to 1 over e to the y, but I want to figure out what this is as a function of x. So this time, since I do have a formula for y as a function of x, remember y was the natural log function, I'm going to sub it back in. And now e and ln, they're inverse functions. They undo each other. So this is just 1 over x. So this is a computation that dy by dx, the derivative of the natural log function, is 1 over x. What have we shown? We've shown that the derivative of y, remember y was the natural log function, it's 1 over x. That's a great result. That deserves to be put in a box. Okay, now we can wash the old brush. And if you've painted with me before, you know this is the fun part of this whole technique. We wash our brushes with odorless thinner, shake them off, <laughs> and just beat the devil out of them. And that's where you take all your hostilities and frustrations, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> there we go.
just have to splash the cameraman one time so he, he doesn't feel neglected. Shoot. Take life easy. Just let it go.